to 15 Minutes With. This time we are joined by Ben Day. Ben played his college golf at Xavier, played professional before regaining his amateur status. All he has done since then is be consistently one of the best players in the state of Connecticut while also making a big splash on the national stage in USGA events. Ben, thanks so much for taking a few minutes to join us. Glad to be here, Sam. So let's start from the beginning. How did you start playing golf? So golf in the day family is kind of a, uh, it's, it's kind of a family thing. So I had, uh, my dad played in college and my grandfather played and my older brother played, my cousins play and my little brother plays as well. So, um, I actually, uh, was a little more interested in the other sports until, um, I was probably 12 or 13 years old, uh, and then decided that, uh, that I would, I would try it out. So, um, Kind of a funny story that I like to like to, to, to share sometimes is uh, I remember my older brother Ed who was also a, a good golfer. Um, he won a junior tournament, uh, an inner club, and was in the newspaper. He was probably fourteen or fifteen years old, or maybe maybe thirteen. I forget exactly which, but um, the newspaper article was laying on our on our dinner table. I took a look at it, and I my mother was there, and I said, "Mom, what what's this?" And she said. You know, Eddie was in the newspaper for, for winning his golf tournament. And I remember saying, well, if he can get in the newspaper, I can get in the newspaper. And I think that that was um, uh, one of the, one of the, uh, the catalysts to me realizing that golf was kind of an area that I could, I could excel. Yeah, and, and you certainly have excelled in it. It took you to Xavier where you played college golf and then also for a short time as a professional, take me through your college years briefly and, and also your professional career and then getting back into the amateur game when you were reinstated. Right. It's been, uh, it's been a long, you know, as I look back on it now, it's just been a long time playing. Xavier was a great place for me. Uh, I played for Doug Steiner, a lot of great experiences there. Got to watch a lot of great basketball, prepared me for life after college. You know, I didn't have a ton of highlights, um, as a college golfer. We had a great team, um, and uh, it, was, uh, it was just an environment where, you know, I learned a lot about myself and it just was, it was a great place. And, um, you know, that was, that was really something that I look back on fondly. And then as a pro, so I had worked uh, for um, a company in Boston out of college for, for four years. Um, and it just felt like the right time. I had qualified for the U.S. Mid-Am out at uh, Forest Highlands and Flagstaff and wasn't too thrilled about my performance out there. And I was single. And I thought that I had, uh, would be able to get back into the workforce if I left uh, to play golf. And um, I just made the decision that I was going to try it so that I, I didn't have any regrets. And, um, you know, I played on the New England tour. And then I actually caddied down at Medalist in Florida for two winters to help kind of uh, supplement uh, my, my lack of income playing. And it was a great experience. I, I met a lot of great people, uh, friends that I have to this day. Um, you know, I had some success. Uh, it was kind of funny. The tours were decimated. It was right after the credit crisis. And, you know, you'd have a percentage of a field that was that, that made the cut. And I remember making cuts with 12 people playing. And <laughs> so on top of probably not being good enough, that 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 uh, helped to make my career pretty short. So I knew I knew after two two years that it was time to go back to work. And um, and uh, that's that's the decision I made. So once you regained your amateur status, how long did it take you to uh, really find your footing in the amateur game? So it's funny. I, I, don't, I don't think about it too much. So uh, I actually have to think about that. So I remember it wasn't too long for me to get my status back. And I think it was because I hadn't played that many rounds as a pro. Um, as I said, I was working in the winter and the tournaments were reduced because of the financial crisis in the, in the summertime. So I think it was less than a year. It was about a year that it took me to get my status back. And once I got my status back, I was, I was busy working um, as I had been uh, not working for, uh, for two years. So I was, um, I was kind of focused on getting my feet back uh, planted on the ground. Um, and so I remember after that had happened and I felt comfortable with my career and where, where I was headed, um, I went down, um, to see my kind of longtime coach, Tom Rosati, and we just kind of came up with a plan, uh, to get me, to get me back on track and competing again. And, um, you know, so that, that was, that's kind of the, 
that's kind of the story there. You mentioned your longtime coach, Tom Rosati. Uh, along with your coach, who's helped you the most and who's had the biggest impact on, on your golf career? Yeah, so that's, that's a, uh, a great question. There's, you know, there's a handful of people that I think have really made an impact on my golf. Obviously, the, the number one person being my dad. Uh, he was a great player. I remember when I was a kid, you know, watching him hit golf balls and play. I just thought he was Superman. Getting to see how he played, how he, uh, how he acted, how he walked, just his, his general presence on the golf course, he really couldn't help but have it rub off on you, uh, especially, you know, to, to his sons. He, he's, he, he would be the, my, my driving force, but there's a few guys that have really made an impact um, outside of him uh, on my golf, and that would be obviously Tom Rosati, who I've known since he was an assistant at Oak Lane when I was a kid. And Tom has always been the guy that's gotten me set in the right direction with my golf swing and, and, uh, and always working to improve. And then there's two other people that um, have really, really made a big impact on my game. And that's George Connor and Josh Brandt. And George taught me aim point. And um, it was, is probably uh, from a technical standpoint is the single biggest improvement I've ever had in my game. I could always putt pretty well, um, in kind of a streaky, streaky sense. Uh, but George taught me how to read greens. And so it's really, it's changed how, it's changed how I play. You know, I'd send him text messages every time, every time I have a good finish in a tournament and I just tell him, uh, thank you. Uh, because, you know, if I couldn't, if I couldn't putt, I wouldn't have finished well. So, um, and then Josh Brandt, who's also become a great friend of mine and is building a nice, a nice business for himself as a, um, as a sports psychologist focused kind of strictly on golf. He's down at golf performance center now. Um, and also coaches a lot of, a lot of people independently. Um, Josh opened up my mind to, um, a, just a different side of golf that I really had never had really never understood well. And, uh, his really just has a fantastic approach, very unique. And it just clicked with me. And, um, you know, I owe a lot of my success to Josh and, uh, and the work he does as well. So those are, those are, those are four people um, with my dad at the top of the list that have really helped me. Talking with Ben Day, one of the top players in Connecticut. Ben, you have had a lot of success playing in CSGA events. You won the 2015 Palmer Cup and also the 2019 Connecticut Mid-Amateur. What do you remember about those weeks? So the Palmer Cup in 2015 there's one there's one real memory that I have from the from the event that stands out above above the rest it was uh we were on the fifth green on the last nine and I was playing with John Flaherty who I ended up uh squeaking out in a playoff uh that that day and we were walking off the green and I remember Ryan Hoffman um had pulled up to the green and I think it was probably because of this because John and I had just gotten into contention the leader of the tournament, he played at UConn, and I forget his name, but he had made a triple bogey, and he was in the lead. And I think we were either at the lead or close to the lead, and I remember specifically thinking, now it didn't turn out. I only got two of the four of them, but I remember thinking, I'm going to birdie every hole and win this tournament. And um, it was just the coolest feeling because it's why you practice it's why you play it's why you, you get up early and you go to the golf course it's to really kind of have the feeling to be able to win you can't always do it but that that was the 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 the, the memory from that tournament for me there was other great ones obviously the playoff hole um was was great making birdie there but um you know that that moment with ryan was was the highlight for me and, and what about the 2018 connecticut mid -Am victory anything stand out from that tournament yeah, I just loved Shuttle Meadow. It set up really well for me. It actually reminds me a lot of um, my home course, New Haven Country Club. It was a Willie Park, and I, I just really loved the layout. It was fair. It was challenging. The greens were challenging. I remember just feeling comfortable out there uh, the the whole the whole um, the whole week. But I had a pretty pretty sizable lead. I forget what it was, four or five or six shots. I forget exactly what it was, and um, I got a little tight in my last 18 holes. I remember having kind of righted the ship there through five and six, I made two birdies in a row to kind of stop the bleeding and then the round continued. And um, 
my wife had brought my two kids out, Margaret and John, to the course. I think we were on the 16th green. And I was coming up, and I didn't really realize where I was in the tournament. But I knew that I wasn't playing my best. And I remember saying to myself on the 16th green, I can't, I can't lose in front of my kids. And so – it was a, it was kind of a fun feeling. It, it, it gave me a chance to pause and kind of, you know, uh, take things into perspective and, and, um, you know, it was, uh, that, that, that would be the, the, the moment that I remember the most was that, that quick realization that, uh, um, your family's here, you gotta, you gotta get it done. You, you mentioned your family waking up early to, to get some practice in. You're also the executive vice president of Summit Plating. How do you balance everything between work, family time, and also keeping your, your golf game at a high level? So that's a good question. Um, it's a challenge. And I think, I think a lot of it has to do with all the work that I put in since I was 13 years old, you know, and um, I kind of understand what makes me tick and how I play well and, um, being prepared with your schedule and knowing the events that you're looking to target and working your time around those events. But none of it would be possible if my wife wasn't understanding. And she, she is, she knows, she knows that I love to play. She knows that I, I, I still love to, uh, to play sports. And this is, um, this is kind of a passion for me and she supports me in it uh, with our two kids. But how, how I do it is I try to organize it. So I can't play in everything. Um, but the one turn, the tournaments that I do play in, you know, I try to, I try to lead up to the tournament working on my short game and putting, and I'll go to the golf course before work um, and spend, you know, quality time as opposed to quantity time there. Um, and uh, I feel like just in the improvements, my experience in preparing for tournaments and kind of making decisions while I'm on the golf course and understanding how I play and, and things like that, um, the experience has really helped me kind of perform when, when I need to. So in, in addition to your playing in Connecticut, you also play in a lot of national events. You've played in 10 USGA events throughout your career. How difficult is it to qualify for those events and what stands out from those opportunities? So the USGA events for me are the most fun thing in golf. And, um, you know, if you, if you're lucky enough to, to play in one, you know, you know what, um, what that means. They're just, they're USGA doesn't, to me, doesn't get enough credit for what a great organization it is. It um, it's the, the events are, are just class events with the best players in the country. And um, you know, it's just, a, it's, it's, it's an honor to, to, to play, to play in them. It's not, it's not easy to make a tur make one of them. I mean, you have the best players in the area. Sometimes the best players coming from out of the area. Um, there's few spots available, and it's the tournament that most guys want to play in the most, um, whatever, whatever it would be, the USAM, the US Mid-Am, the Junior, whatever, whatever tournament would be, the US Open. And so you have, to, you have to be prepared to play well that day. And I think, you know, I've been fortunate to where I've been able to kind of figure out the formula, formula that works best for me so that I can be prepared to play well on the days that those tournaments come you're just fortunate every time you make one of them and you never know when you're going to play in the next one, or if the one you make most recently is the last one. So you, you, you have to enjoy the tournaments. Um, you asked about a highlight. We got to play in the first U S four ball at the Olympic club, which was really fantastic. Yeah. Because... Ben, let me, let me set the stage on this quickly about the U S amateur four ball. So you've gotten to play in three of those, including the first one. And in each of those, you've been able to play with your brother, Dan, who won a Connecticut junior am. So, uh, yeah, now, you, now take, me, make, take me through those experiences and what it's like to play in those events and also get to play with, with your brother. Yeah, the, uh, the, they're, they're, they're very similar to the, to the juniors I played in and the mid-ams that I played in. Um, they're, they're, they're the best events, and they have the best players, and the courses are fantastic, and they're really just um, amazing experiences. Uh, getting to play with my, my little brother um, – is another is another highlight you know he Danny has always really been a great player and you mentioned he won the Connecticut junior I think he's the youngest player to ever have won um I like to take credit for that because he thought that if he could beat his older brother then he could beat the other guys so that's uh that's a joke we always share so but he's a fantastic player he hits the ball he, he's a great ball striker 
Um, he plays with a lot of confidence. And, um, you know, the nice thing about us playing together is that we grew up playing together. So there isn't the um, maybe the, the, the inner team um, concern about the other guy letting the other guy down because both of us understand that, you know, we're going to go out and we're going to play our best. And if we don't play well, you know, it is what it is. And so we just get to go out and play together. And so I think it's worked really well for us. And the highlight that I would say with, with Danny and I was at the first one that we made at the Olympic club and we made match play. I think it was, it was, uh, we, we got in, I think comfortably there. And our first match was against these two guys. I think one of them was Denny McCarthy's brother, who's on the, on the PGA tour. They went to Loyola, I believe in, Mar in uh, Maryland. And uh, we're playing the front nine at the Olympic club and the other player shot 28 on the front nine on his own ball. And I'm saying to myself, why, why did he have to shoot 28 against us? But uh, somehow my, my, I, I wasn't playing particularly well that nine and Danny shot two under on his own ball. We were four down after him shooting two under on his own ball. And, um, it was, it was kind of an overwhelming opponent and we clawed our way back to dormy with two to go. They were dormy with two to go. And we were on the, the 17th hole at Olympic. It's a par five up the hill. So we hit our drives that the, the Fox had just taken over the USGA um, uh, coverage of all the, or the coverage of all the USGA events. So they were, that was their first test event. So Greg Norman was there with Brad Faxon and they had the TV tower on the right. And as we were hitting our approach shots, I saw Greg Norman and, and Brad Faxon come down out of the TV tower and they came over relatively close to the fairway to watch us hit our shots. Now this was uh, unique to me because I had caddied for Greg Norman at medalist probably four or five times, just him and I. So even though he didn't remember me, obviously I remember him. So we hit our shots up onto the green and Greg Norman and Faxon had walked up to the green with us. And I had lipped out an eagle putt to extend the match to 18. And, um, it was, uh, it was a memorable experience. So we, we didn't, we didn't, we didn't win, but, um, I think we might've taken it. We shot 66 or I think we were six under at the time and we lost our match. So that was, that was a little, that was memorable. To say the least. Uh, we're talking with Ben Day and Ben, we're going to get you out uh, on this one. The 2020 season, obviously a difficult season for a lot of reasons, but you played well in in the events that you played in on the CSGA schedule. So how would you rate your season? And then what are your goals for the 2021 season? Yeah. So first of all, the CSGA did a fantastic job of conducting the season that felt, that felt like a regular season uh, to their credit for that. They did a great job. So the 2020 season for me was, I'm still trying to figure out how I feel about it uh, because, um, it's definitely a glass half full or glass half empty approach. And I'm, I'm trying to, trying to make it full. So I felt like the Palmer cup, I, I let that one get away. Now, Rick played great. He's a fantastic player. Uh, and he deserved to win. Uh, congratulations to him. Uh, but I felt like I was playing really well and there was just a few things that I could have managed a little bit better. It was a long day. We had a really quick turnaround from the first to the second 18, and I felt like I just let it slip a little bit and I just am considering it, you know, something that I'm looking to work on for next year, just an opportunity to improve there, my mindset and how I approach a tournament with a big lead. Um, and so, you know, that, that was a little bit of a disappointment there. And then the Connecticut Am um, where I made it to the semifinals for the first time and lost to Cody. You know, I was, I was pleased with that because um, that's the tournament that I, I would love to win. And getting, getting to the semifinal um, is just giving me a little bit of taste uh, for that going forward and what I need to do to, to hopefully continue on that, on that journey there. But, um, you know, Cody played great. He played great in the final. And um, I just ran out of gas a little bit. It's a marathon of a tournament. You know, you, you realize just how, how difficult it is to win that one. So I was, I was pleased with that, with my finish there. And then in the mid-am, you know, with the schedule the way it was with COVID this this year, you know, you never really have two tournaments uh, that you target uh, to play well in back-to-back -back weeks. I finished ninth, um, but I, you know, it just wasn't it wasn't it wasn't uh, it wasn't my best effort. So um, 
I think it was a good year. My goals going into 2021, obviously we're, uh, we're building our new house. Uh, it'll be ready in, in May. So there's some, there's some question marks there, but I feel like I'll be able to have another season where I can uh, try to improve on uh, my finishes and try to win a tournament, you know, just continue to grow uh, on the things that I'm working on. He is Ben Day, one of the top players in the state of Connecticut. Ben, thanks for joining 15 Minutes With. I'm your host, Sam Dostler.